Hello and welcome everyone. Today we'll be discussing regarding steroids. How and when to use it in patients with community acquired pneumonia. In the recent COVID-19 pandemic, what we saw was that steroids were the most effective drug in reducing mortality in patients who developed COVID-19 ARDS. Now, once the pandemic is gone now, we are not sure how to utilize this in a setting of community acquired pneumonia. Now, without the pandemic, various other types of community acquired pneumonia are coming up different viral infections and bacterial infections so today we will be discussing regarding two recent studies which were published last month on steroid and pneumonia first study will be on covid-19 the second will be on community acquired pneumonia and steroids and we will try to summarize how to personalize the usage of steroid and to improve outcomes in patients who are coming with community acquired pneumonia now the first study is a retrospective study done in pain from covid-19 study which was done in 5745 patients after screening they included 4226 patients and out of this 85% of the patients received steroids and the rest didn't receive steroids so basic idea of the study was to try to find out in which cases we got better outcomes in covid-19 so coming straight into the result per se here we can see that there is a significant improvement in outcomes in patients who received steroids there is a significant reduction in the risk of death so if we look into the subgroup as to which subgroups showed benefit we can see here as the age increased that is age more than 60 years there was improvement apache more than 12 sopa more than 5 leukocyte count less than 0.7 crp more than 150 high inflammation and more age use of high flow nasal oxygen and invasive mechanical ventilation these were the reasons which were associated with improved outcomes with steroids so if these indications are present then we may consider to start steroids for better outcomes in other population we may consider not to start steroids initially this is basically in the context of the complications that are seen here we can see there is a twice risk of developing hyperglycemia and there is also a significant risk of developing a nosocomial infection and also which has been established microbiologically which means there are two major complications associated with it. so if we summarize this study what we found out was some characteristics of the patients which can be used to personalize the therapy and we also noted that there are important complications which should be aware of and which have definitely happened especially hyperglycemia and nosocomial pneumonia which should be kept in mind before we prescribe steroids or how long we should continue steroids the other important finding was the duration of steroids steroids when given more than 10 days was found with better outcome The next study is a study which was done in community acquired pneumonia where they used low dose methylprednisolone. In this, they randomized around 4,000 patients. Out of this, they included 587 patients, and half were divided to the methylprednisolone group, and the other half was given to the placebo. And here, in the day zero, they received 40 milligrams infusion of methylprednisolone, which was followed by an infusion. from day 1 to day 7 they gave a infusion of 40 mg from day 8 to day 14 they gave 20 mg from day 15 to day 17 they gave 12 mg and from day 18 to day 20 they gave 4 mg so it was a basically a fixed dose which was given without any correction for the body weight and in the end they didn't find any significant change in the outcome no change in mortality also they found no problems with the complications so how do we now process these two studies and how can we individualize our therapy in patients who are coming with community acquired pneumonia and in whom steroid may be showing some kind of a benefit the current approach that we're following is that we give a fixed dose and one size fits all for steroids in this we do not see the patient characteristics we just make a diagnosis and then start a fixed dose of steroid which may not be the ideal situation the next thing is we don't monitor anything we don't really do any kind of uh, clinical assessment or any biochemical assessment to check whether actually the patient is showing any benefits to steroid finally we do not have any clear cut outcomes neither we are looking for clinical outcomes nor specifically looking for any complications so overall the steroid therapy in community acquired pneumonia is very very vague if you find our videos interesting and helping you then do give us a like so the proposed mechanism is like this we have to individualize the dosing based on the diagnosis 
based on the body weight based on the inflammatory status of the patient then we must at regular intervals or at daily basis do some clinical assessment or biochemical assessment to see how the patient is actually behaving with the use of steroids whether the inflammation is improving or the inflammation is going down and also we need to keep up our eyes open for two very important things the first is clinical improvement the other is the development of nosocomial infections if we are having complications we can reduce the dosage and if you are not finding improvement we can in increase the dosage so we need to tailor our therapy as the patient's course in the ICU changes so basically what we can do is what we know is that there is a phenotype that is we have either pneumonia ARDS or this could be of other reasons like bacterial pneumonia or COVID-19 pneumonia whatever be the one phenotype which we are terming as ARDS or community acquired pneumonia it can have multiple endotypes that is different presentation in individuals this is because of the multiple organisms multiple imaging modalities that are used so here we can have two basically different approaches that is either the patient can have a hyperinflammatory status or a hypoinflammatory status we still don't know what are the parameters to define these things but this is the most overall differentiation which can have and we can do further research on this that is if the patient is having a hyperinflammatory status we can and should continue the steroids and if there is a hypoinflammatory status we should stop our steroids the other important thing is that if we do start steroids we need to look for there is a if there is any defect in the steroid signaling or if there is any steroid resistance if that is the case then we should again stop steroids because there will be complications if we don't stop steroids so overall idea is to personalize the therapy try to find out characteristics which can improve the patient outcome both before initiation and also after initiation by continuous monitoring thank you for your patience